Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 254, the Gospel of Mark, chapters 14 through 16. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. We're going to finish Mark today. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. We're still trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah. (laughs) So bear with us, listeners. Yeah. It's tough because so much of it is repeated, but we still have to kind of mention that. Mm-hmm. Remember this? We want to make it a cohesive story. Kind yeah, of. so if we leave out all the stories that we've already heard from Matthew, then we'll just kind of jump from one to another. It'll be out of context. It'll seem strange. So I think we're going to have to go through and remind ourselves about stories that we're told in the Gospel of Matthew that aren't going to be told here. Should we try that now? Yeah, let's try it. (laughs) All right, chapter 14. So we're going to begin with the plot to kill Jesus. Who's plotting? The Jews. They're deciding they're going to kill Jesus. And the only difference between what Matthew says and Mark says is that Matthew mentions... Caiaphas. Caiaphas is the high priest. Uh Whereas in Mark, there's no mention of Caiaphas. Okay. Next. And next we have the anointing of Jesus' head. Ha! Huh, who anoints? No one knows. So a lot of people think it's Mary Magdalene, but it doesn't say in, in either gospel. But a woman comes and anoints his head mm-hmm. with expensive oil. And really expensive oil. Some people complain about it. Now in Matthew, it says that the disciples complain. Mark just says some people complained. But Mark specifies how much it would have been worth. And it would have been worth... A lot. 300 denarii would be about what a worker would be paid for a year's work. Yes. And so the people were upset, saying, hey, we could have spent that on the poor. And Jesus said, oh, you'll always have the poor. They'll always be with you. I won't be. All right. I'm going to talk about the next one. Okay. Judas goes to the high priest and he says, what are you going to give me? And so they agree to give him something. So in one of the Gospels, he it's says... It's 30, 30 pieces of silver. And in the other, it's unspecified. All right. Then the Last Supper. So they're all hanging out together eating. Yeah. It's the Passover meal. Yeah. Jesus says, this is my body. This is my blood. And he says that one of you is going to betray me. The one who's dipping his bread with me at the moment here. Yeah. That's the guy that's going to do it. So he was kind of revealing it, Mm -hmm. that it's going to be Judas. But that's only done in Matthew. Mark doesn't say. Okay. If there's anything different between the two accounts, Mm -hmm. I have all these differences pointed out in the notes that we're just skimming over here. Yep. It'll be specified there. And so I encourage people to go to the Skeptics Annotated Bible website and see the text that we're reading from and the notes that are there as well. Okay. For a more in-depth analysis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one is Peter's promise and Jesus's predictions. Peter says, hey, Somebody else might betray you, and all these guys might abandon you, but I will not. Right. And Jesus goes, oh, yeah, you will. Yeah. Yeah. All he says, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. All right. The last little story is Jesus praying at Gethsemane. He says, I want to go up to Gethsemane. Can you guys come with me? And they fall asleep. Yeah. And he's kind of disappointed in that. Jesus is praying in the garden of Gethsemane, and then Judas shows up. With the chief priests. Yeah. And a bunch of armed people are going to arrest Jesus. So Judas comes up and reveals who Jesus is with a kiss. Someone cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant. Then all the disciples run away. In verse 51, it says, There was a young man wearing a linen cloth on his naked body. Okay. And then in the next verse, it says, When the men grabbed him, he left his cloth and ran away naked. Huh. Yeah. So <laughs> Who was that, you think? And no one knows who this naked boy was. He just had this cloth, and someone grabbed the cloth, and he ran away naked. And that's all we know. I guess he was one of the followers of Jesus, because they all ran away. Yeah. Some people have speculated that he might even be the evangelist Mark, the the, the guy, writer. The guy that's, yeah. <laughs> of course, Mark didn't really write it, probably anyway, right? Right. But, you know, there's just all kinds of speculation about who this mysterious naked young man was. Huh. 
chapter 14 ends with Jesus being taken to the high priest. He's asked some questions by the high priest. And one of them is, are you the Christ? Yeah. And Jesus says, you say that I am. That's what he said in Matthew. In, in Mark, he says, I am. So that's the only difference there. Carol, back when we were talking about Jesus' prediction, yes, Peter's denial, they may all deny you, but I won't. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, yes, you will, before the cock, cock crows. crows. Well, now he does it. And that's the end of chapter 14. In chapter 15, Jesus is brought before Pilate. He's already been to Caiaphas. So they sent him up the ladder. Because the Jews don't have the power to put a man to death. At least that's the way it was in Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> <laughs> so they bring him to Pilate uh -huh. uh, because he can. And so Pilate is asking him questions. Right in the middle of that episode, the Gospel of Matthew gives us this little account of Judas uh, went back and he returned the 30 pieces of silver and gave it back to the Jews and they wouldn't take it. Mm -hmm. And then he went away and hung himself. Oh, That's in Matthew. When we're talking about Pilate, mm -hmm. and Pilate is questioning Jesus, yeah. that's where that story is placed him. right there, kind of in the middle of that interrogation. That does not occur at all in the Gospel of Mark, which is what we're doing. Yes, so Mark doesn't have any mention of Judas hanging himself. No. So he could still be hanging around. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that's a good point. Um, Hiding um, in the bushes somewhere. That's a very good point. As far as I know, the fate of Judas is never revealed in the Gospel of Mark. Hmm. Looks like that was something that Matthew added. He probably wasn't that naked boy with the cloth. Yeah, no, I've never, no. <laughs> I've never heard anyone suggest that. But to go on here, we may never be able to get through with this. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some things that happen while Pilate is asking questions of Jesus that should be pointed out. It's a difference between Matthew and Mark. Okay. In Matthew, Pilate makes a big deal of defending Jesus. His wife had a dream. Oh, yeah. Don't have anything to do with this guy. No, he's, he's a good he's guy. A, he's a good guy. Leave him alone. And Pilate tries. He says, look, I find no fault with this guy. Why should he be punished? The crowd insists that he be crucified. Yeah. And in fact, they had a guy named Barabbas that was going to be offered instead. Yeah. And they wouldn't take it. And so they kept saying, crucify, crucify him. And so Pilate gave up. He washed his hands and said, it isn't on me. And they said, oh, that's okay. It's on us and our children. We'll take this blood on right. our hands. Yeah. That isn't in Mark. It's only in Matthew. Oh. Huh. So that's kind of a significant difference between the two. Yes. And then the soldiers are mocking Jesus. They do that in both. Yeah. Okay. And then Jesus is crucified. Yeah, and there's not much difference there. Even the words that are used that he says at the end uh -huh. and the words that people speak about, you know, come down from the cross if you're really the Christ. Yeah. And then Jesus ends up saying, Oh God, why hast thou forsaken yeah, me? Yeah, that's right. Matthew and Mark agree pretty well on the crucifixion. Okay. Then verse 40. After Jesus died, it tells us that there was a group of women watching from far away. And among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph, and Salome. Where is Mary Mary, the mother of Jesus? She's missing. It's very strange that all of these Marys would be named, these mysterious Marys whose identity is really not very clear, right? <laughs> so Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, could be Jesus' mom. Because, remember, Jesus had brothers named James and Joseph? Yes. So it could be Jesus' mom. But why would you describe her like that? I don't know. If it's Jesus' mom, you'd think it would just say Jesus' mom. Yeah. And then Mary, the mother of James, that would be the Zebedee's boys. Okay. And Salome. This certainly isn't the Salome that people think of. Who asked... For uh, the head of John the Baptist, right? Yeah. It's not uh, Herodias' daughter. No. But we don't know who it is. No one seems to know. Okay. Hmm. So it's just a strange uh, group of women that were there. All right. So then back to the crucifixion itself. So he's crucified and then dies. Yes. And the moment that he dies, the uh -huh. curtain in the temple tears from top to bottom. And Matthew says there's a big earthquake. 
So where is the temple? Everybody sees this. Oh, look, the curtain's torn. Oh. <laughs> no. I mean, who knows? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a story. You know? And an earthquake. <laughs> People feel the earthquake, presumably. Uh, yeah, there was a big earthquake. And people in Matthew's gospel, dead people got up and walked around the streets of Jerusalem. Mark doesn't mention that there was an earthquake when Jesus died, and dead people walked the streets of Jerusalem, as recorded in Matthew. Okay. And then Jesus' burial. Yeah, and that's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. We had Joseph of Arimathea getting a tomb and Pilate agreeing. To let him take him down from the cross. Also, there would be the question of maybe he was, they were taking him down before he actually died. Oh, oh yeah. That wouldn't be good. No. <laughs> <laughs> then he could rise from the dead pretty easily, right? Yes, he could. Yeah. Okay, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, comma, Mary, the mother of James, comma, and Salome brought spices to anoint Jesus' body. They came to the sepulcher at dawn on the first day of the week, wondering who would roll the stone away from them. But when they got there, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. They entered the sepulchre and saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. Maybe that's the naked guy in the garment. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> he said, don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. Tell his disciples that he'll meet them in Galilee. The women were amazed and ran out of the sepulcher. They didn't say anything to anyone because they were afraid. This is the end of the Gospel of Mark. At least it's the end of the Gospel of Mark in the oldest and best manuscripts that exist. We're not finished here. I see more text. There's 12 more verses. Oh. And there are several other possible endings that occur in later manuscripts. Mm. But the earliest manuscripts end at verse 8. It's a strange thing because it ends with the last verse is, they didn't say anything to anyone because they were afraid. So if that's the case, how would anybody know that Jesus had risen from the dead? That's yeah. the end of the gospel. Yeah, so they, <laughs> somebody had to finagle something. That's right. So, so I think some scribes are concerned about that. You know, mm -hmm. the, People say that the gospel of Matthew doesn't have the resurrection in it. Mm -hmm. It kind of does. I mean, it has this young man saying that Jesus is risen. There's that. Yeah. Empty tomb. Yeah. But only these three women are told about it, and they're so upset and frightened that they don't tell anyone. And that's the end of the gospel. And so somebody said, uh, we better add some stuff. So this is what they added. Yeah. After Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of which he had cast seven devils. Wow, she was occupied. <laughs> yeah, and the women came to the tomb and saw it was empty. Mm -hmm. Now it's saying that after Jesus rose from the dead, well, he'd already risen from the dead. Yes. So now we're being told another resurrection story, that after Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared to Mary Magdalene. But he doesn't say anything about the other Marys. Yeah, so just her, I guess. Okay, but, so this is choose your ending. Of Jesus' life, <laughs> yes, that's I think, right. I think or it his is. resurrection. And we're going to have a lot of that because we're going to have other Gospels that are going to have other stories about resurrection. How it it's, happened. it's quite a challenge to put all these together into one, and that's the thing that we're we, having trouble with. And we don't really want to try to do. We're, yeah. we're get, right now, we should be trying to understand mostly what, what is Mark's Gospel saying. Mm -hmm. Of course, the trouble is, now we're in the addition to Mark, the added ending. Yes. <laughs> Whoever wrote Mark didn't even know about. No. But anyway, it starts with that. He so, appeared to Mary Magdalene. Okay. So Mary Magdalene went and told Jesus' friends who were mourning and weeping. They didn't believe her. That's weird. <laughs> it sure is. Because didn't Jesus say, I'm going to rise from the dead? Yeah. And they're saying, yeah, well, this is the first we've heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Mary Magdalene, we're not going to believe you. Later, Jesus appeared in another form to two of his disciples as they walked in the country. They went to tell the others, but they didn't believe them either. Hmm. So Jesus appeared in another form. It's like, kind of like in costume. Or translucent <laughs> or something. Yeah. Well, he looked different, I guess, in a different form. He isn't what people would expect. Maybe it was just somebody else. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so after that, Jesus appeared to the eleven while they were eating, and he scolded them for not believing the others who said he had risen. Yeah, and there's really no reason why it would be the 11 here. It seems like Judas could be there as well. Like yes. They probably wouldn't like it too much because they kind of knew. 
maybe that naked kid in the cloth was joining them as well. There might be 13. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So verse 15, he said to them, go and preach the gospel to every creature. You mean like animals too? I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever doesn't believe will be damned. Yeah. That believe seems pretty, or be damned. Pretty clear cut here. Yeah. It's a, probably the clearest statement as to who's going to be saved and who's going to be damned. The only thing that matters here, you got to believe and be baptized in order to be saved. Otherwise, you're damned. Hmm. These are the signs that will follow believers. They will cast out devils in my name, speak in tongues, handle serpents, drink poisons without harm, and heal sick people by laying hands on them. So these are the five sure signs of believers, according to the risen Jesus, which you couldn't have a much better source than that. <laughs> <laughs> right? People should be speaking in tongues, casting out devils, handling serpents, and drinking poisons without harm, and healing sick people. So if you're not doing those things, then you're not a follower Believer. of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And there are too many people that try the poison thing. No. I haven't heard of anyone doing that. But there are a lot of snake handlers. A lot of those folks have died. Because there must be a certain level of poison that you can handle in your system before you die. There are a lot of snake handlers, but it's a very dangerous occupation. Yes. Because a lot of them have died. <laughs> Verse 19. After Jesus said these things, he went to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. His disciples preached everywhere with Jesus working with them and performing signs. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I think we're done with Mark. I think so. Whoever added those additional 12 verses yes. didn't do anybody a favor, right? No. no. Those are some hard things to... Swallow. Yeah. To save or be damned is a horrible thing to say. And then the crazy idea that you're going to have to do those five things, including drink poisons and handle snakes. That is weird. Very strange. Believe or be damned. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty clear. Yeah. But it contradicts his other things that Jesus said. He never yeah. said that anywhere else, you know. Okay, Steve. <laughs> Thanks for um, walking us through this. Yeah. Sorry that took so long. <laughs> That's okay. It's probably going to be worse than Luke because then we have we have to say, well, this is what Matthew said. And this is what Mark said. And this is what Luke <laughs> said. What Luke... Oh, my gosh. We can get through this. We yeah. can do hard things. We're half done with the Gospels now. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. Thanks again. And listeners, thanks for being with us. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.